Hello and welcome to Talking Live. I'm Dr. Robbie Ludwig right here in Starshop Studio in Times Square. We have almost like a live concert today and we are so excited to have Emmy nominated country superstar Risa Binder. She has come out with a new album. She has an Emmy nominated song that was a part of General Hospital. Yay! Oh my God. And she's from University of Maryland where my son goes. So I was super excited about that. We're going to hear about her motivation and we're going to hear her fabulous songs. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much for having us. <laughs> yes. And your, and your good looking team. Oh, That's thank so you. I, I agree. Thank yeah, you so much. Yeah. So you're originally a city girl. You were from Brooklyn for. So yeah. So yeah. I am just like a gypsy. I love living in all different places. I'm from Maryland originally, but I live in, uh, in Brooklyn, New York. I lived there for nine years and yeah. would go back and forth to Nashville, Tennessee and just fell in love with both places, still in love with both places. So I'm so happy I, to be here. I'm amazed at how anyone can make it in the singing market. I mean, what you've accomplished is amazing Thank you. because it's, well, first of all, it's your beauty, your personality and your talent, but there's a lot of talented people out there and, and you ton. just kind of went for it. You have to go for what like your heart tells you to do. And I was always, I would always sing songs about boys I had crushes on. And it was really embarrassing because my parents would be like, who's that about? And I'm like, <laughs> no, nah, I can't tell you. But, but it was just in my heart from, from so young. So yeah. thank you. Just when did you know you wanted to be a singer songwriter? Um, I knew there is a place in Nashville called the Bluebird Cafe uh -huh. and you go there and you sit, there's these church pews in the back and it's in the round, the songwriters face each other. And I knew when I went there and heard the songwriters, it was Garth Brooks songwriters, not oh, Garth Brooks. Okay. And they were all singing his hits. And I just thought, this is incredible. How do I get to do this? It was life changing. For oh, me, for so sure. it really happened in adulthood after you graduated from college. Well, I would always write songs from okay. being little, but I, I guess it really hit me because I grew up in the theater. And so doing shows with my parents and my sister and stuff, and it just it hit me. Then I'm like, how do I get to do this every day? Because this is incredible, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it amazing when you find your passion yes. and can do it? Yes. It's, it's really like falling in love. It so and is. It really is. And I know how it feels because that's how I feel when I get to do what I do. I always, in fantasy, wanted to be a singer and I have a bad book. No, fantasy. You want to sing back up today? Oh, or? definitely not. You we don't can't. want to ruin anything no, you for you. Oh, yes. <laughs> My singing is called the gong show in two seconds but it was so cute when I was reading about you you said that when you were young you would use like um, an ear of corn an ear of corn oh yeah uh, so I live near a bunch of farms and there is these we get these dried out ears of corn and we have a fireplace that has like a little mock stage and my sister and I would stand up there with our corn and just lip sync to every not a hairbrush that's what I would use <laughs> I, I guess that's what you use if you're gonna be a singer on the true. gong show right? No. Anything will work. You can make anything a microphone. Right. Anything is a microphone. Now, you say you were inspired by your parents. They were in the theater. So were they actors? No. So my mom is a teacher oh, and okay. my dad is an engineer, but we just grew up in our town. I, I'm from Columbia, Maryland, and it's a big arts town. And so from when I was five, we would do um, community theater together. And it was just like, I was never good at sports, but uh -huh. I, but my team sport was being in an ensemble in a show. And um, just from that young, every summer, it was something we would do as a family. And so oh, it's wonderful. Nice. <laughs> and then at University of Maryland, you also were in theater. Were you a theater major? I was. That's where I actually learned about country music because a professor wrote an original piece about country women. Mm -hmm. And I had to be Loretta Lynn. So I had to research Loretta Lynn and her life is just unbelievable. And so researching her made me fall in love with the genre. Country. Yeah, what I really like about country music is that it's people telling stories. And it's the truth. And the honest stories. And there's such therapeutic value in that, I imagine, for the person writing it, but also for the person listening to it. And I don't want to, I don't want you to think I'm rude because we are going to introduce Reese's team when she sings, but maybe we could do a brief introduction. You can tell me how you met this fabulous ensemble that you have with you. Well, this is entourage. Total, total New York and total New York. This is my friend Cameron and my friend Dave, and they play all over here in New York in a ton of bands. Yeah. 
and they're wonderful musicians. And in total New York spirit, we met a year ago uh, where I sang for the Voice of America, and I needed to find players in the city, and, and we met through friends. And this is insane. Musicians are so talented. They meet me, and in, and we had never played together before, and they just knew everything 100%, wow. and they're fantastic. So oh, I'm well, so we, we are so happy to have you here, and we'll hear from you later. And we'll also, we'll put a, a link up so people can find you as well. That'd be great. Risa, well, I was so excited about General Hospital because I grew up watching that. And when I saw that your song was Emmy nominated for having a song as part of General Hospital, that's huge. How did that happen? Honestly, I almost thought it was a joke because you just don't realize where songs could go. Yeah. And I wrote a song called Just Like That with a friend in L.A., and just about truth, that song is about two friends of mine who met. He was her math tutor, and they fell in love and got married. Aww. I thought, just like that. It happened just like that. So you write a song with other people, yeah. and you never know where the song's going to go. And about a year later, we get a phone call. It, your song is in General Hospital. And sometimes songs are just 20 seconds in a bar. So I said, oh, like 20 seconds in a bar scene? Uh -huh. And they were like, they're, they're singing the whole thing. And that wow. never, so it became a part of the script. So That's huge. Remember Jesse's Girl? Yes. So that was a song that made it big as a result of being a part of General Hospital. I don't think I knew that. Oh, you do? oh yeah. No. Right? Know, Rick Springfield? Yes. So yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. The okay. things you learn on talking I just live. Yeah, that's huge. I yeah. have to say, it touched my heart when I was reading about just your personal goals. And compared to some singers, and I totally understand it, their goal is to rise in the charts. But yours is really to make people happy. Just, I love writing songs that are inspiring, that make people want to go and live their dreams, too. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm a huge vision board person. Please come ask me all about that. But I have vision boards. I have them in my apartment here in Brooklyn and in, in, in Nashville, and I put my goals up in these pictures. And I would say about each year I do it, and about maybe 80% of them come come tr to fruition. So and so I'm huge on that. Um, and so being on the radio was one, and we've had a song. I just had a uh, first top 40, and it's just crazy what happens when your brain really focuses on what you want. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we were talking about following one's dreams. And... It can be tremendously helpful, but you also have to be talented. Uh, yeah, I for you sure. Know, you know, and hopefully, and you just really hope, and, and maybe you guys can understand this too as musicians, because I'm sure you've seen the opposite, where people are really passionate about being musicians, but they need to go back to music class, or just there's no hope. Or, you know what I'm saying? Not to be mean, but you just hope that your passion is in sync with what you're good at. For sure. I, you know, and like what's so cool about writing in general, writing mm. songs it's in, in Nashville too. It's here in New York, but in Nashville, that community, you'll, I, it's like dating in a way. Like you go in, you have a song idea. You don't know these people. You yeah. hope they like the idea. And if they don't, you have to start from scratch, but you start the creative process with nothing and you end with a song. And that to me is really inspiring. You mentioned during one of your interviews that you really are a believer in signs and looking for signs, and that actually happened for you in a coffee shop in Nashville. Oh, about my... Okay. Yes. Okay. This is crazy, so don't think I'm crazy, but yes, I'm a huge sign, a huge sign believer, and I really prayed a lot to have a baby, you know, and last year, I was performing for the CMA Fest, and I had my family in town. I'm a huge coffee lover, so I go to the same, and I'm a huge creature of habit, so I go to the same coffee shop in Nashville every day. Three brothers, you have to go there, it's delicious. <laughs> and they give me a cup of, co a cappuccino with almond milk in it with a little heart, one, one heart. And last year, I sat down, and so every day, same thing, one heart. I go to sit down, I put my backpack down, I get ready to journal, and I look at my coffee, and there's a heart with a line coming out of the heart with a baby heart. Aww. And I was like, I'm pregnant. And that's so weird because I never took a test. I never, it was just the weirdest thing. And you I, did not know before that. I didn't know before it, but I knew from the cup of, and I'll show you, I'll put a picture up on my Facebook so you yes! guys can see it. But I knew from the cup of coffee and I thought, I can't tell anyone this because they're going to think I'm crazy, but I know I'm pregnant. And a week later I took a test and I was pregnant. And it was the crazy, I just, I found out there. That's, that's, and so, so, weird. that's so fascinating. But, well, I think, you know, when you're in touch with yourself and just your world around you and you're an artist, I think you just pick up things. Too. So many things like that. And just, you know, 
I, I could go on about signs, but I think they happen for every single person. And if you ask for a sign, you're going to get it. So just be on the lookout. You will. <laughs> and actually, it it made the song that you were working with at the time. Now I'm going to find the name of the song. Um, the song that you came, along. you came along, and it actually took on a different meaning for you. It sure did. So I so when you record a record, it's usually way before you tour. So I had this song called "You Came Along." I had recorded it about a year ago. So it was in the can, as they say, and um, it, I wrote, or I, sorry, I did not write You Came Along. You Came Along was written by the Low Cash Cowboys and Phil Barton and, and Lindsey Rhymes in Nashville. But I recorded it, and when I recorded it, it was about my husband to me. Like, You Came Along, You Changed My Life. And when we were going to make the video for our next single, I found out I was pregnant, and I was like, wait a minute, You Came Along is about her. Yeah. And so we changed the whole idea of it and shot the video three weeks after giving birth. I don't know how I did that, but like, and we put her, she's in the end of the video. And so Aww. she's three weeks old and I'm holding her. It's insane. It's please go watch it. It's just crazy. Oh, well, at, we're, we're going to send everybody to your Facebook page and to your website cool. so that for any, anyone who is not familiar with Reese's work can, can find out more about her and learn where she's doing her concerts. So you can be a new fan or just an old fan. That's just really well connected. You also do something really nice for for your audience and I thought this is so sweet your your greet and sweet your sweet and greet and we put actually oh, oh. also you're selling things right I'm sing and repeat yes. which are it looked like a great workout it's so comfortable sure. yeah like you wear it to like work out and then sleep in and yeah yeah <laughs> for me it would just be right repeat and then write because that would just work for me but if it works for you to sing too good god bless you let's get to the sweet picture we have um the sweets that was on your facebook oh, page wow. um okay yeah i'm obsessed with yeah. Sweets, obviously. Okay. And so I love finding little things like here in New York, my favorite. Have you ever had Big Fine Melissa? The yeah, okay. sure. Obsessed. And so sometimes when I'm on tour, I'll I'll have her stuff with me. Oh, but that's I nice. love to do yeah. at the end of every show I do, wherever I'm at. For example, I did a show at Billy Bob's in Texas. And right before the show, we went to a barbecue joint. And this guy was like, the, the chef was like, do you like banana pudding? I'm like, I love banana pudding. And I'm like, can you make like... 80 of them, like little ones wow. that come to my show. And he did. And it was just, it's bringing that sweet little treat at the end to get to know my fans and yeah. just share something. Um, sweet is just one of my favorite things to do. And that's one of the reasons why you're such a role model for women out there and moms out oh. there, because you're really showing women how to juggle everything. And I think it's really great just as a mother who also worked doing what she loved. It's nice to mix everything all together. Oh my gosh. I'm, and I'm still, yeah. it's so, I'm a new mom. And so learning balance is crazy. It's but just it's, ongoing. It's okay. Good. I have to yeah. ask you all about that, but just what's so awesome is to be able to just continue to do what you love, no matter how hard it is. And you just, when I got on stage the first time and I'm like, wait a minute, I'm a mom. My baby's actually backstage. It was, it was so crazy. Yeah. And so now each time I get to do it, it's such a gift to be able to sing and connect with your audience yeah. and then show my daughter, like, this is exactly do what you love and do your dream. And it yeah. gets me emotional thinking about it. And it's anyway. nice that your life is so balanced. Too. Well, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, that you're married, you're having a family, you're including it with your work life. I think that's really important for women to see. Absolutely. You have that to. You can do it all. You can. You don't you have can. to give up one or the other if you don't want to. No, you do not. You do not. Do not give up anything. You have to go for what is in your heart no matter what. And that doesn't mean that every day is lollipops and unicorns. Oh, God, no. It, you know, but like, but if you can find the little lollipop or unicorn in every day, it's in there, but that doesn't mean the whole day is going to be like that. And you share inspirational messages. That's from your Facebook, become yes. your dream, because you really want everybody to have that experience. You've worked with some interesting legends too. Uh, James Taylor. Yeah. I want to hear what that's like. Okay. And Ronnie... Ronnie Millsap. Mills. Yeah, I can't say that name. I spelled it wrong and that I've been he's lost ever since. Okay, he's kind of unbelievable. I don't know if you know him, but he is seven. I think he's in his seven, late 70s uh -huh. now. He's blind. Wow. And he used to tour with Ray Charles. He's oh. had 42 number one hits. And um, I just had the opportunity. This was like, I was so nervous about this, but he needed an opening act. And this was three years ago now. 
I had just moved to Nashville and, and they had heard of me and they were like, okay, he's getting inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame today. Why don't you open for him? And if he likes you, <laughs> then you can continue to open. And, and who him. wouldn't like you? I, but I was so nervous. I'm like, great, no pressure. The <laughs> Hall of Fame, okay. Um, and so sang and we continued to tour together oh, and how great. for a year and a half we toured together and he's amazing. Who inspires you out there as far as like country singing stars? There are so many people. Um, I, I love Carrie Underwood. Um, I, I obviously, I grew up listening to Garth Brooks, so I love him. Um, Sarah Evans, um, Martina McBride, just like uh, mm -hmm. Reba. I mean, I love strong women. And yeah. the good thing about Nashville is that you can live your family life and tour. And that's something that was really important to me. So <laughs> you know who I like? Bonnie Wright. Bonnie Wright is amazing. Yeah. Oh my gosh. She's incredible. She, and she Woo! writes some of her songs too, right? She writes a lot of her yeah. songs. Oh yeah. Yeah. What I like about country stars too, is that it seems like they allow them to go through the different phases of life compared to other recording artists that after you're like 19, you're kind of old and have to go into retirement. Well, the thing is, the older you get, the more stories you have to exactly. tell, right? And so I love that yeah. about country music too. <laughs> We're going to do a quick five. We're going to ask you some personal questions that um, your audience can get to know a different side of you. Okay. Okay. Who had the most influence on you growing up? Um, wow. I would say my mom. Okay. And now being a mom, it even means more to me. And she just, how, she had dinner on the table every night, has a full-time job as a speech therapist and just always was sunshine and is wow. still sunshine now. So, and she raised sunshine. How did she so. do that? I have no, how do you do that? I'm learning. I don't know. Yeah. Well, don't look at me. Cause <laughs> yeah. I don't have that. You're sunshine that. too. Well, I'm sunshine, but not as far as cooking every night on the day. No, it's like order in, figure it out. <laughs> like New make York. sure, make sure yeah. you're fed, you know, Feed yourself. You're fed. Good. That's good. What's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Um, stay in your lane. There's only one you mm -hmm. and you're, you need to stay in your own lane and not compare yourself to other people, especially in this industry. Yeah. You have a story to tell and you matter and you know, just stay in your own beautiful lane and you'll get to where you need to be. Yeah. Honor your own uniqueness regardless yeah, of what the feedback is. If you could pick up a new skill in an instant, what would it be? Um, oh, my new skill. um, Fixing things? Oh, like, I am. God, you're so pragmatic. I, I love fix, no, I can't fix anything. I mean, I have to ask other people, and I yeah. joke. My husband can take a rubber band and make it into like a boat to like go down. He, he is like MacGyver yeah. or something, so I can't do that. So <laughs> fixing things. God, God, I love that. You're so down to earth. What's the first thing you do when you get home from a work trip? I eat a piece of chocolate. Oh God, I love that. <laughs> you go, girl. <laughs> You go, girl. I go to the fridge because I keep them chilled. Like, and um, yeah, yeah. I, Who do you think are the three greatest living musicians? Living? Oh man. Well, James Taylor is okay. one of them. Um, living. Ooh. Well, Cameron, Jim, Barbara, you can help okay. out, right? Barbara Streisand. She's great. I mean, I grew up listening to the. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh man. Um, who do you love? Oh, Stevie Wonder. Come on. Oh, yeah, Stevie and Wonder's good. Paul McCartney. Who yeah. Would you, who would you say? Say. Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney. Mm -hmm. He's up there. He's yeah. up there. Now, that's you're going to sing one of the recent albums that's coming out, mm -hmm. right? You came along. You came um, along. It's a single that's out right now. And we, it's been on country radio for a little while. And it got, I think it's at 30, it was at 38 recently. And so it's Terrific. doing well. And yeah. All right. Well, let's, let's hear it. You came along okay. inspired by your daughter or taking on a new meeting. Taking on, it's yes. yeah, Liel is her name. So yes. holy cow. Hello, Liel. Hi, Liel. <laughs> But every picture was painted, finest wine in the world was tasted, every wild ride was written, no idea what I was missing. Thought every note had been sung, thought every note had been sung, every chord had been strung. Just when I thought every song had been written, just when I thought every road.
the sweetest kiss if it can steal your spell on my lips. Seen the glow of a perfect night till I looked into your eyes. Thought every touch of it touch till I wanted your so much. Yeah, I thought I knew love just when I thought every song had been written. Just when. So good. You have another song for us. This was one of your first ones? This was a funny breakup song. Okay, so in Nashville, when you go to write with people, you keep titles in your phone. And I had a title called U-Haul for the longest time, but like Y-O-U, U-Haul, uh -huh. like get out. And so you had to wait for the right combination of people, funny people to write it with who would get it. So a couple people didn't at first, then I found a people who did, and we wrote this song as our funny breakup song, and we went and trashed a person's house as the music video and so oh, it was fun. super fun and actually if you watch the video for you haul this is embarrassing but true i brought my own toaster uh-huh and i go to throw it and at the end we took everything there to goodwill and so i, I lost my toaster in the making of this <laughs> in the making of this video well it sounds worth it it was totally worth yeah, it yeah and it sounds like a lot of fun it was so fun all right so let's hear this one okay you haul oh my yes. We'll pack it up in a U-Haul, baby, where you're going doesn't matter at all. I've had enough for too long, every trip to the truck gets you closer to gone. Babe, I packed it up now, U-Haul. Come on! dishes from last week they won't be piled in the kitchen sink throw in your tools and close on the lawn all my girls getting our drink and pack and party on we'll pack it up in a u-haul baby where you're going doesn't matter at all i've had enough for too long every trip to the truck gets you closer He wanted to fly, so we're playing frisbee with your 45s. Your poker table, your Xbox, that ugly lava lamp I accidentally dropped. We'll pack it up in a U-Haul, baby, where you're going doesn't matter at all. I've had enough for too long, every trip to the truck.
need your posters. I, I, I don't need your toaster. Binder. We're going to have all the information about her latest album, where you can find her, where you can get her T-shirts, all all of that information. Well, also you'll give us information too, so people can find you in New York as well, because they're definitely going to be writing in about you guys. Are you guys single? Uh, not single. Not single. This this cutie's single. Okay, I'm just saying. I know. I know. It's, I want to be a matchmaker. I don't know. Thank you so much for joining Talking Live, and we'll see you again on Monday. Bye.